Hello and what's up to you all matriculants. This is Met Literacy Time and I am AB, of course, joined by John. How are you, John? I'm very well, thank you, AB. Guys, great to be with you again this evening. Um, you might be wondering where Peter is. Well, he's headed for the coast, okay? Mm. He's on his way to Cape Town via Durban and he's trying to use as many <laughs> different means of transport as possible. I'm not sure if he's going to include walking in that, but we'll hear when he gets back. Awesome, I like that. And for my friend, Siawong, he was watching you on Physical Sciences and he was like, I so wish John could teach us math. So this is for you, Sia. I know John is going to simplify everything. What are we doing today? Okay, guys, today we're doing something that's really important. And even if you're not doing maths literacy, you need to watch this, okay? Because this can make a real difference in your life. It's all about inflation. Have you heard of inflation? Yes. Do you know what inflation is? Yes. You sure? I'm sure. You're going to answer all <laughs> my I'm questions? I'm going to learn so much. Uh, okay, also well, we'll check. I know now, it from now economics, guys, we need to, huh? I know it from economics. Okay, very good, very good. So we're going to talk about inflation, and Amy's going to help me, I think, with some <laughs> of the answers, to seeing he's the, the economics guru. So we'll, we'll chat about what inflation is and show you step by step how you can answer even the most tricky questions. Abby? Awesome. I hope Peter is not here because of inflation. No, no, no. Look, I know <laughs> that he is inflating, <laughs> yeah, um, but, but maybe he'll deflate as well over, over the time. I, I hope so. We'll see him. But otherwise, for you, my sisters, we've got great and exciting news. We're giving away this awesome Casio calculator. All you need to do it is to answer all the test yourself questions correctly so and give us your right information don't just leave a blank space answer the questions and should you get all the questions right you stand a chance of winning this awesome calculator you have up until 4 p.m tomorrow to enter but for more information about the show and ch to chat with me go to facebook.com forward slash len extra like the page share the page with all your friends because currently we're on 75,600 likes so keep on sharing and liking the page and now you can also so follow me on Twitter at Len Extra so that we keep the conversations going. John? Thanks, Amy. Guys, get ready. Take a deep breath and breathe out. Now, that means that you're going to be inflating your lungs and then as you breathe out, you deflate. But we're not doing life sciences today, <laughs> so let's just move on and start to deal with some real stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to explain the concept of inflation we're going to discuss how inflation affects the cost of living. And that's really important for you to know. So you need to be careful about how you use your money, how you spend, how you save, how you invest, how you take loans. We dealt with loans last week. Now we're talking about inflation, and that's really important as well. We're also going to complete some calculations with inflation. So guys, don't go away. And if you're struggling, Post a question on the page. Try the challenge question, which is coming up right now. And here it is. Now let's have a look at it. It's a careful look at it. So we're given a graph, and we start off somewhere about here, which is 2010. So in 2010, the inflation rate is given at about 9%. Then at 2011, the inflation rate goes down to, if I'm reading correctly, about 3%. So that's 9% there. This is 3% here. And the inflation rate then increases to about, I'm guessing, about 4.5%. Okay? So that's what the blue graph is telling us. The question we have to answer, we're going to get into this, is have the price of goods increased or decreased from 2010 to 2011? Have a very careful look at that graph. Read the question very carefully and make sure you get the right answer. Has the price, have prices, the price of goods increased or decreased between 2010 to 2011, according to this graph. Please post your answers, and let's see who gets the most right. Okay? Is it going to increase or decrease? That's all you've got to say. But try and explain it as well. 
to explain why you're saying as well. Don't just put increase, decrease. Say increase because. Decrease because. I don't know. You'll have to decide exactly what your reason is. But that's enough of me talking. I think I've given you enough hints. So, maybe what is inflation? Let's have a look here. This is a definition. It says that inflation is a way to measure how purchasing power of money changes over time. Now, guys, I don't know if you've had this experience. But maybe you've saved up some money, or maybe you've got some loose change in your, in your pocket, and you say, oh, I really feel like a chocolate. And so you go into the shop, and you know that the last time you bought a chocolate, it cost you five rand. And you've got a five rand coin or some coins that make up five rand in your pocket. And what do you notice? Hey, when what's the price of chocolate? It is. It's now six ninety nine for that little slab. And you notice what they've done as well. Those people that make chocolates, instead of keeping them the same size, they've reduced the size. <laughs> and then they make you think that you're getting more for your money. No, they're not. They're making it smaller and they're making the prices more expensive. Very, very interesting. Why is it happening? What's the reason for it? Well, maybe you can ask AB that because that's all an economics thing. He wants to eat more chocolate. That's what <laughs> I can see. But, but guys, the important stuff here is that we know that goods change prices. Okay? They change prices. You've experienced it. I've experienced it. Another day you'll go into the shop and suddenly you'll see that there's a special and the price of your favorite cool drink is now two rand cheaper than it was. So prices change. And because prices change, over a period of time, we find that the money that we are earning, and the money that we are getting into our bank account from earning money and from working, can either buy more if prices go down, or money can buy less. So either the purchasing power is a way to measure how the purchasing power, how much goods, how many things you can pack into your basket if you only have got 100 rand or 200 rand, how it changes over time. Now, if you talk to people uh, that have been around for a long time, like your grandmother or great uncle, or something, they will tell you, well, I was a boy, we used to buy a whole bunch of sweets for five cents, and yeah, they go on like <laughs> yeah. that. We'd go for a cinema, and, we'd, I don't know. And, and they'll tell you a whole long story about how much they could buy for five cents. Where today, yeah, if you lose five cents, what's the five cents? Eh? Mm. Um, so the, the, the value of money changes. This changing change in the amount of money and the value of money is called inflation. So Inflation represents, and it's an important thing, it's not just a, a, a funny idea, uh, an arbitrary idea. It's the average change in the price of some selected goods or services over a period of time. So I want to get this clear to you. First of all, you need to understand it's average. And usually inflation rates, because sometimes things go up and down because there's a sale or because there's an oversupply or because there's a scarcity, things go up and down over time and there's fluctuation in prices. So what the statisticians do and the economists do is they take an average. Now if we want to get technical, and I'm not going to get too technical because you don't need to know this, it's linked to something called CPI. You might hear it on the, on the news. Do you remember what CPI is? Consumer said? Price Index. Consumer Price Index. That monitors how the price that consumers, how people, are paying for goods. And we can say it's increasing or it's decreasing. Okay. Now, what we need to recognize is that based on the Consumer Price Index, Statisticians are able to work out, take a sample of goods. They can't take everything in the shop. They take the most popular things, or they have a fixed basket of things, and they say, how does this average change? Now, every now and again, the statisticians come together and say, well, we think we must throw this out of the basket and put that into the basket. 
They talk about a basket of goods, so it's things that not everyone buys, but a lot of people will buy, and they use that to measure. Now, some people say, oh, you know, that's just the statisticians talking. They can make the prices seem to be only increasing by 5%. But really, when we go to the shops, we've noticed that, for example, our favorite packet of chips has gone up by 50% in the last year. But the price of inflation is only, or the rate of inflation is only 5%. So you've got to understand it's not just on one item, although we can get it on one item, but it's usually on a whole range of goods. It's all linked to supply and demand, and it's linked to how much, how imports and exports go. It's all economics. We don't need to worry about that. All we get given is a number, and that's a percentage that says, compared to last year, it's more expensive or it's cheaper than last year. And we'll explain exactly how that goes. So I think I've already answered why we have an average. The average, the reason, because we've got different goods, there are different goods, and they change in different ways. They change in different ways, different amounts. Change in different amounts. And even it changes from month to month. So we want to average it out because an inflation rate is given usually per annum. They can give it over a 10-year period as well or a 5-year period, but the most common one is per annum. And how do we represent it? And that's just what I've said here. We represent inflation as a percentage per annum. Per annum, remember, it's just like compound interest or simple interest. Per annum means per year. And now, what is a positive inflation uh, percentage mean? Well, positive means that there's been an increase in price. So an increase. Things have increased. Increase in price. The average trolley or the average basket when you go shopping is going to be so many percent more than they were last year. We'll come to a question like that. Now, the important one that you need to understand is what does a negative percentage mean? Well, that means that there's been a decrease in price. That means that your money has got more buying power. More buying power. Okay. You might have paid 10 rand and you were able to spend, buy six bananas last year. Take the same 10 rand and you now can buy 12 bananas. Reason is because there's been a negative inflation. Prices have gone down. Now, who controls inf inflation? Any idea, uh, Abram, in South Africa? You got any idea? How do we, surely we'd like prices to stay the same. Mm. But what are the factors, who the, what's, what's involved in controlling inflation? Any ideas? There? I think it should be the government or in a reserve bank. Okay, very good. Now, uh, Abby's quite right. And I didn't know that he was so good at this. Else I would have asked I more difficult questions. <laughs> okay, so what we know is that there's a government policy. And the policy that is set by the Minister of Finance, and it's in fact been a policy for a long time, uh, is to target inflation. Because, you see, what happens with inflation? Every year things go up. So what does that mean? That people, the poor people in the country, find it more difficult to live. Which means that there's pressure from even the poor people that have got jobs that don't have big salaries to want more. And so we have a problem when people want more money. So every year the prices go up, but that means that people, workers, demand more money to be paid for the work they're doing. And so you get this pressure to increase salaries. Now, that all will have a, a run on. So what happens? Prices go up, workers demand more, 
Because workers demand more, the producers need to charge more. So that means the prices go up. Can you see? It's going to get on and on and on. So the government wants to control inflation. They've said, we want to set a target for economic growth to target inflation between 3% and 6% every year. And to do that, they issue a directive to the Reserve Bank and every quarter, or sometimes they can even do it as an emergency, the Reserve Bank, the governor of the Reserve Bank, comes along and says, we've looked at the inflation, we've looked at the economy, we've looked at where things are, and we're either going to make it easier to lend money, or we're going to make it more difficult. We're going to make more money available, or we're going to take away money from the economy. And by doing that, they're controlling the inflation. The relationship, you don't have to know. But basically, that's how we're working at the moment. In some countries, there have been cases where inflation has got to millions of a percent per day, okay? where the money actually loses its value. And in those same countries, after they've stabilized, what's happened is the money has gained strength and prices have fallen. So you get something called hyperinflation and then hyperdeflation. But we won't go into that. There's a lot to this topic. So I'm sure you agree. Okay, so guys, I think that wraps up our little summary. And I hope you're looking at that challenge question. Also the test yourself. There's some really nice questions there. Get on. AB. And uh, not just for free on the test yourself questions. You stand a chance of winning this awesome calculator. But remember, mindset is if you're stuck anywhere or whatever John is going through, you still have some questions and there's some confusion. Feel free to ask me on facebook.com forward slash Lenextra. We'll take your questions. See you after this break. Welcome back, Mindset is now. Remember, next week you guys are on holiday, but we call it a study holiday because we'll be revising with you guys. So make sure that you watch our shows next week. We'll still be working and helping you guys. And whenever you have some problems, our help desk will be there to help you through. John? Thanks, Abby. Let's get into the challenge, the, the questions now. Um, these are important. You need to take note of them. Here's question number one. Question one says... Consider the table below, which gives the inflation rate of a new motor vehicle over a period of time. So this isn't a general inflation rate. This is for specifically for motor vehicles. So they've isolated motor vehicles and they've got a, a rate. And what they're saying from the 1st of January 2005 to the 1st of January, notice it's a year, the inflation rate was 14%. From the 1st of January 2006 to 2007, it was 6,75%. And from the 1st of January to the 1st of January, that's from 2007 to 2008, negative 4,5%. So now let's see what the questions ask. It says, if the car costs 144500 on the 1st of January 2005. Then determine the cost of the same vehicle on the 1st of January 2006. Now, guys, we shouldn't really strictly be doing this. But let's use the figures and let's try and do it. Because remember, inflation's an average, even on cars. Um, if it was on the same car, the same car would lose value over time. That's called depreciation. But if it's a new car, it's new on the first, then we'll say, what would that car cost if we took into account inflation? So l let's have a look. What are we going to do? We are working from 2005 to 2006, and we're saying the rate of inflation is 14%. That means that the price you pay for the same thing has gone up by 14%. So really the problem is, how to work out what 14% is and add it to the original price. And that's not difficult because we know percent means divide by 100. So I'm going to say 14 divided by 100. And I'm then going to times, oh, not don't do that. Let's take that one away uh, because I've now 
I want to get out of there. There we go. Uh, and then we're going to times the fraction by 144,500. 500. And this will give me my increase. This is my percentage that the price is going to get up because it's a positive value. So what is it? It's 20,230. So the amount that I must add to my price is 20,230. So I must add 20,230. That's what I must say. It's 20,230 plus 144,500. Now I'm not going to leave that to chance. I'm going to take my calculator and add those two together. I'm going to say, right, I started with that. I'm now going to add 114,500. And I'm going to get an answer of 164,730. 164,730. Rands. Now, guys, if I want to check it, there is another way to do it. And I want to show you that other way. If you ever have to increase something by a certain percentage, then you can do it by straight multiplication. Instead of adding, like I've done here, I added the 14% to the original amount. So I could say this is like 100% and this is 14%. So really what I need to do is to multiply the total by 114%. If I break that down into a decimal, I can do it like this. I can say 114, 114 divided by 100 equals, oh, didn't divide properly. 114 divided by 100 equals that amount, which is 1, 1,14. So you can work it out in decimals. You can always know that it's 1, 1,14 if you're wanting to increase something by 14%. This is like just the same sort of calculation you do if you want to find what the total is after you've added that. So we're taking 114, uh, 1, 1,14, and we're going to multiply it by the original amount, which is 114,500, and I've typed them in, and check the answer, 164,730. And it's exactly what I got the other way. So I know my answer is correct. It's a very good idea that you understand both methods. In an exam or test, you can do the one method and then check it with the other method so that you know that you haven't made a mistake. Right, next question. It says, what would someone pay for this type of vehicle in January 2007, on the 1st of January 2007? So, guys, let's have a look. We know that it went up 14%. We're now looking at 2007. We only know the original price, which was a 2005 price. We now know what the 2006 price is. That's the 2006 price. And we're saying inflation is a positive 6,75%. So that means it's increased by... 6,75 on the 2006 price. So to work out the 2007 price, I'm going to take the 2006 price, which is 164,730, and I'm going to multiply it by 1 comma. Now look here. This is very important. It's not 14%. It's 6,75%. So it's 106,75%. 106,75%. Seven five percent. So when I do that, I can do it on the calculator, but I'm going to tell you it's zero comma six seven five. Let's check it on the calculator. Um, even though we've got that answer uh, clear, we're going to say six comma seven five divided by one hundred. And what does that give me? It gives me zero comma six seven five. I'm now going to say plus 1, and I'll get that answer. And I'm going to multiply that by 167,000, uh, uh, 64,730. So 64, Correct it. 
Make sure that your readings are right. 16470. And you get an answer here of 17584927. Now the 275, can we read it as 275? No, we've got to round off to two decimal places. And really, when we're dealing with cars, we can even forget about the cents. Nobody's worried about the cents. We round off to the nearest whole number. And the realest whole rand is 49 rand. So I would say that this price you're going to pay is 17, let me just get it, I didn't uh, take note, 175949, uh, 175849, 175849 Rand. And that's to the nearest Rand, and I've just rounded it off. If I wanted to round it off to the nearest cent, you could do that as well. It's not going to be totally incorrect. Okay, so we've got the value now at the end, or at the beginning of 2007. That's my 2007 value in January, 2007 January. Now, the table says something interesting. It says from 2007 to 2008, look here, negative 4,5. What do you think that means? Negative 4,5. Well, it means the price has decreased. Maybe they made too many cars. And the reason now is that not enough people are buying. And there's a stockpile. And the manufacturers want to bring out a new model, so they've dropped the prices. That's what happens. So the price has now decreased. How much has it decreased by? By 4,5%. Now, I'm going to do it the first way I'm going to do it. So I'm going to show you how to calculate 4,5% of my total which is the first way that I did it. So I'm going to say the negative means means there's been a decrease in price. And as I said, there could be lots of reasons for that. I've given you some examples of what could be. And now we want to know what the new price is. So let's start off what the price the year before was, and that was 175849. 175849. 49. And now what we know is it's decreased by 4.5%. So I'm going to calculate what is 4.5% of that amount. I'm going to say to myself, 4.5% is that amount multiplied by 4,5 divided by 100, just by 10, by 100, and I will get the amount of 7913. 7913. 7913. So the 7913. That's the amount that has decreased. We've got to take that away. 7913. Now, let's go to back to the calculator and we're going to say to ourselves, let's do this. 175. 849 minus 7913. The reason it's minus is it was a negative rate of inflation. Negative means it's decreasing. Okay. We've subtracted it, and the new price is 167936. So the new price is going to be one six seven and nine three six. And there we go. Can we check it? How do you think we can check it? Well remember when we added fourteen percent, we said it was one hundred and fourteen percent. If I want to check my answer, what I could do is I could say I'm starting with a hundred percent, which is that. I'm now going to subtract 4.5%. If I subtract 4 from 100, that gives me 96. Subtract a half, that will give me 95.5. So if I take my original value on the calculator, here we go, 1.75849, and I multiply it by 95.5,
divide it by 100 because it's a percent. Okay, divide it. Let's see how close we are. I'm sure we'll be right on target. 167,935. And you'll see if you round it up, it's 167,936. One, uh, round it up to the nearest decimal place will give us the whole number in rands. The reason it was slightly different was because our answer originally had the one that we worked with, the calculator, had some sense in it. So, but I think it's a pretty good confirmation that we are on the right track. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Let's go to the next question. And we're now dealing with the very interesting subject of wages and prices and inflation. And it's quite complicated, but let's see what it works out to. Uh, we, we recognize here that we've got Mr. Nisi. And Mr. Nisi is work works at Super Spa. Um, and he earns a net salary of only 8,570 8, rand a month. Due to the fact that Super Spa is not doing well, Mr. Nisi does not get an increase in his salary the following year. Oh, well, that's bad news. You want to get an increase. You want to be able to buy a little bit extra. Um, and the reason that he's now battling uh, is because his monthly expenses uh, in his following year, uh, Mr. Nisi has monthly expenses that amount to 7,850. Due to his inflation, his expenses rose by 6,9%. So he has a net salary of um, 8,570. 8, Let's see what the question says. Uh, what is net salary? This is the salary after tax. Salary after tax, pension, medical aid, and any other deductions that the company takes off the salary. Net means the money that gets paid into your account. Okay, So it's after deductions. He might be paying back a loan. He might be doing more. With the use of calculations, show that what sort of financial position Mr. Nisi will be in in the year in which he did not get an increase. Okay, so let's understand two things. We're starting with his net salary, and we're starting with the amount that he usually spends. Now, we're told that his, the inflation rate is 6,9%. So now he has to pay more if he's going to spend the same amount. So let's work out what his new expenses will be. So his new expenses are going to be the original expenses, which was 7,850, 7,850, multiplied by 6,9%. Now remember, it's going to increase by 6,9%. So I'm going to make it simple. I'm going to say multiplied by 1,069. Why am I doing 1,069? Well, it's 100% plus 6,9%. That gives you 106,9%. You can check it. We've done it both ways. I'm just doing it the short way for the moment. Because I really want to get on to the next question as well, if we've got time. So, let's see. 7, 8, 5, 0 oh, times 1,0. Don't forget the zero. 6.9%. That tells me that his new set of expenses are going to be 8,395 rand and 65 cents. I'm going to round that up to, to uh, a whole rand, and I'm going to say his new expenses are 8,392 rand. 92 rand. That's what his new expenses are. Guys, how much money does he actually only take home? He takes 9,570. Sorry, he takes home 8,570. Can you see that that means that there's not very much room? That's his salary. Those are his expenses. So what's left over? Let's work out what's left over. We're going to say this is his expenses. And I'm going to ta times this by negative uh, 1.
because I want it to be an expense. See, I haven't changed anything. I'm then going to add his salary, 8570 and I'm going to see what money he's got left over. He's only got 178 rand. 178 rand. Roughly as a savings or as an emergency fund. If something goes wrong, he's in trouble. Okay. There's not much room for luxury. My advice to Mr. Nisi is to cut down on that amount. There might be some things that he has to decrease. So if he's put there that he decrease expenses, he must try and decrease expenses. He must try and get some increase on savings, increase on the savings, because you never know when something's going to go wrong and you need some money saved. Okay. Looks like this is the only two questions we've done for this section, mm. but let's There's go and more. take a break. All right. Remember, my sisters, you have the challenge question on facebook.com forward slash learn extra and the test yourself questions in order for you to stand a chance of winning an awesome Casio calculator. It is the same calculator um, that John is using. It, that one, it's just the simulation of the same calculator. But otherwise, we'll check you out after this break. Welcome back, Minds. It is now for you, Great 12s. Remember, remember, next week we have a revision just for you guys. So it's not just a holiday. It is also a study time. So the challenge question is on Facebook. We'll be answering it after this question. Okay. Thanks, AB. I'd like to get to question three. I'd like to answer it, and then we'll come to the challenge question. We've been trying to get to the special fridge, which is part of this question for a while. <laughs> so have a look here. It says, consider the following graph, which illustrates the inflation rate of fridges over the past three years. And I want you to draw your attention to the fact that we start off with an inflation rate in 2009 of 6%. Then the inflation rate goes to 4% in the next year. And in the next year, it looks to me like it's 3.5, negative 3.5. Now, the question that we've got to answer is, could one say that the price of the fridges decreases every year? And you need to explain your answer. Now, guys, this is quite interesting. Because what we're saying is that between 2008 and 2009, the prices went up by 6%. So whatever they were in 2008, the price has increased by two by six percent so there was first of all an increase of six percent okay so clearly from 2008 to 2009 increase now what's happened between 2009 and 2010 well we told the inflation rate is four percent what does four percent mean it means that whatever the price was in the previous year there's been an increase of 4% on that price. So did it get more expensive or did it get cheaper? If I say I increase the price by 4%, has it got less or more? No, it's got more. So there's been an increase of 4%. Please notice that the increase was 6% in the first year, but it's 4%. Yes, it hasn't gone up as much. So the first year, it might have gone up by 50 Rand. In the next year, it might only have gone up by 35 Rand. But it's still gone up. Okay. Very important for you to understand that. Now, the critical thing here is in the final year. What's happened? It tells me on the graph, there's my zero line. And I want to make it very bright and very clear. There's my zero line. So the blue graph has gone below the zero. That tells me that there's been a decrease. Oh, better not use that one. There's been a decrease of 3.5%. And I'm just uh, sort of guessing that it might be cl closer to 3%. I was just reading off the graph. 
So has, could you say the prices of fridges decreased every year? No. It was an increase, increase, and then only after the then was a decrease. Please notice that just because the graph goes down doesn't mean the prices are going down. The graph could go down as long as it stays above the green line. It could go down like that. As long as it stays above the green line. It is increasing. Now the question is, what happens if it happened to land on the green line? Well, that's a 0% inflation rate. 0% means the prices stayed the same. Please be aware of that. Right. Now, we come to uh, a fridge that we have been trying to do for a long time. It's been in the notes. It originally cost 3,293 Rand in 2008. Because Mr. Yen couldn't afford to buy the fridge for cash, he buys it on higher purchase. And so look what he had to do. He had to put down a 15% deposit. He had to pay one, 166 Rand for three years. And he had an admin fee of 7.50 7 uh, per month. Uh, that's what his agreement was. He said, would the fridge have cost Mr. Yen... What would the fridge cost Mr. Yen after three? Had he, had he bought it on the 1st of January 2008? So what would the fridge have cost Mr. Yen after three years? So instead, if he, if he had bought it in 2008, um, sorry, let's just check this. Uh, had he bought it on the 1st of January in 2008? So... Let me just make sure that I'm reading it right. What would the fridge have cost Mr. Yen after three years? Okay, so what we've got to do, he's bought it on higher purchase. We know that his higher purchase agreement is he's got to have spent a deposit of 15%. So let's work that out first of all. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work out in the higher purchase 15% of the price which was 3293. 3293 Rand. That's what he pays first of all. So let's get the calculator out and let's work this out. Clear. We're going to say 15%, 15 divided by 100, multiplied by 3293. 3293. And we're going to say that's his initial amount that he pays. He pays. Uh, 493 Rand 95. I'm going to round that off to the whole number of 494 Rand. 494 Rand. This is higher purchase. Now the next thing it says is he has to pay 166 Rand for three years. Now that's a month. So what's three years? Three years times 12 is 36 months. So 166 166 Rand times 36. And if we do that, we'll say that's 166 times 36 equals 5976. Okay? This is looking very bad. 5976. But included in that, he also had to pay... Uh, an admin fee of 70, uh, 7 Rand 50, also times 36. And so let's do that part. The admin fee of 7 Rand 50 times 36 equals 270 Rand. 270 Rand. So now let's work out how much he's paid for this fridge after three years using the higher purchase method. So 270 plus 5976 plus his deposit of 494 and look what he ended up paying 6740 rand wow that's really quite a lot of money that he spent on this fridge now have a look at the no next part of the question how much would that fridge ha have cost mr yen were he to buy it for cash on the 1st of January 
2011. So here's the important thing. If he had waited and instead seen what the prices would have been, he could have saved a whole lot of money. Yeah, he wouldn't have had the fridge for three years, but who cares about that? So he started off with 3293. 3293. And we're told that the first percentage from the graph, I've read it as 6%. So the first year, it increases by 6%. That's 1, 1,06. Okay, let's work that out. Would have been 3,293 Rand multiplied by 1,06%. And that gives me 3,491 rand. 3,491. 3,491. Now, what happens in the next year? Look at the inflation rate. It was 4%. So I'm going to multiply by 1,04. And let's see what we get. Remember, this answer was 3,491. We've started with that. We're going to increase it now again by 4%. Multiplied by 1,04. And that gives me 3,600. Oh, and I missed it. 3,630. That's good enough. 3,630. And that's my answer there. 3,630. Now, remember, this was 2,000. This was the price when he bought it in 2008. So he bought it in 2008. In 2009, this is what it would have cost him. This is what the price would have been. This is the 2009 price. This is the 2010 price. Because it's gone up. We want to know what the 2011 price would be. Let's see. The inflation rate, I think, reading off the graph, was 3.5%. Well, it's between 2 and, and th maybe it's 3%. But let's use 3.5. So, guys, how are we going to work this out? Let's take 100. Let's subtract 3. So 100 minus 3 gives you 97. Minus a half is 96.5%. So 0, 0,965. Let's check it on the calculator. I don't want to check it on the calculator because I'm saving that value there. But I'm sure you can see that that's the right. 96 and a half plus a half would give you 97 plus 3 would give you 100. So it's decreased. It's not the same. It's not gone up. It's gone down because it was negative. So we've done that. So we take our answer and we multiply by 0, 0,965. If we do that, we now see that the price of the fridge is only... 3,503 rand. 3,503 rand. Now, what's the lesson? What's the lesson? If he had even saved half of this money, can you see he would have been able to buy more? He would have been able to buy almost two fridges. If he was, instead of paying the people the amount of money to pay for the fridge and higher purchase. If he had just saved that money, he could have bought the fridge cheaper. See what's happened to the price. It started at 3,293, and after three years, it's gone up, it's gone up, and then it's come down. It's not cut, it's come down from before that, so it's between that and that price. That's what inflation does. Now guys, I want to quickly do the challenge question. So let's get to the challenge question uh, and see how we're going to do that. Because I think we've done enough now to uh, be able to understand this question. Let's fill it in again because I've got my answers here. This was 9%. This is, reading off the graph, 3%. And this over here is 4.5%. Horrible uh, value that it's put. This is four and a half percent. So question is, 
Have the price of goods increased or decreased from 2010 to 2011? So guys, first thing, make sure you read the question right. We're only interested between 2010 and 2011. And notice something here. There's something very interesting. Notice that the percentage, the rate of inflation, the rate of inflation has gone from 9% to 3%. That's a decrease in the rate of inflation. It's a decrease in the rate of inflation. Okay? Originally, you had to add 9% to the value of the goods but now you only have to add what three percent so has it still gone up yes even though over here between 2009 2010 you had to increase by nine percent between 2010 and 2011 you still have to increase but you only have to increase by a smaller amount so the rate of change of inflation, and that's what we sometimes talk about, has decreased. The rate has gone down. There's been a decrease in the rate. A decrease in the rate by 6%. But that doesn't mean we started at 9, we decreased by 6, we've still got 3%. So it still had to increase. So, I'm sorry for all those of you, and I've seen them on Facebook, they've said, decrease, decrease, decrease. Guys, no. It actually increased. I think they were confusing, con confusing the, the, the value, the power of the, the price value and the inflation. No, well, no, no, it's not just that. What they're confusing is the, the rate of inflation. It's a positive. If it's a positive, yes. it tells you the prices go up. The fact that they're not going up by as much, that's what we call the, d the rate of change in the inflation rate. The change in the inflation rate. So there's a difference. There's the change in the price, there's the change in the inflation rate. Please don't get those confused. Are there any other questions? So true. Um, Titus, what happens to the inflation rate when the price of good loses value? Okay, so, so sometimes we know that we buy goods um, they depreciate. So you know that if you went and bought, bought a smart car, uh, the moment you draw, drive it out of, the car, uh, out of the sales yard, it loses its value. That's not inflation. That's called depreciation. Okay? The market on second-hand goods could be worked out, the inflation rate on second-hand cars. And that depends on supply and demand. It depends on a whole lot of other inf uh, influences. You can get a different rate of inflation on second-hand goods as well. Okay. Thank you so much, John. It's been a pleasure being with you, AB. Thanks. And I uh, hope, hope you have a good week next week. We're having some public holidays. And uh, to the learners out there, study hard. All the best. So true. It's time to revise for you guys. But for today, that's where we ended. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you. We know that you're going to be downloading the notes if you don't have them right now. But from us, me and John, we just want to say we love you guys and all the best in all that you're doing. Keep up the focus because on Mindset Learn Extra, you learn more and learn extra. Peace.